Hello, we are going to talk about freezing point depression. Now this is a colligative property, which means um, this property is a physical property, just depends on the amount of solute that's added to a solvent. It doesn't um, depend on the actual identity of that solvent, just the, or excuse me, the solute, just the number of particles that solute produces. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at our formula for freezing point depression. Um, if we add any solute to a solvent, it is going to decrease the freezing point. So add any solute to a solvent, the freezing point of that solution will always be lower than the freezing point of the pure solvent. Now let me give you a quick example. We do this in Utah all the time. Um, we will put salt on the rose. It's because Utah, um, our winter temperature will hover right around zero degrees um, where it's going to freeze. So if we put salt on the roads, it decreases the freezing point of that water. So instead of um, freezing at zero degrees C, maybe it will freeze at negative two negative three, and that's just enough wiggle room that I can drive on water instead of driving on ice. Um, so freezing point depression, we're decreasing the freezing point of um, the solution. So water is going to freeze at zero degrees C, but when we put any solute in it, it's going to freeze lower than zero degrees C. Now here's our formula for it. Um, is delta T sub F equals I KF times M. Let's go ahead and label everything on this. So notice this delta needs change. This is the change in the temperature for the freezing point. And I'm going to do FP. Now the important thing on this is that word change. When you get this answer, the delta T, that doesn't give you the new temperature. It tells you how low the temperature goes. So whatever I get for delta T, um, if I'm using water right here, that means I have to subtract that from zero degrees. So it's telling me the change, how much lower the temperature is. Be careful on that. You can totally see the mistakes that students will make. They'll get this answer, it'll be like 5.5, so they circle it. But it's actually the new temperature, the new freezing point is negative 5.5 for water. It goes down. So be really careful, that's changed. Now I, this is kind of a funny um, term, is van. The um, Van Toft, so it's a T apostrophe Hoff, uh, Van Toft, I'm, I hope I pronounced that right, factor. Really what that is, is just the number of particles. This is number of particles. Now a little reminder, anything that's a non-electrolyte, like glucose, sucrose, um, that is going to be one. Ionic compounds, though, we have to dissociate those into their ions if they're being dissolved into water, and that will give us our I. So sodium chloride, will break into sodium and chloride, that would be one, two. The particles, the I, would be two, two. <laughs> um, Kf, this is a constant, and you're going to use a table for this. It is our um, freezing point depression constant. Kind of a mouthful, huh? Freezing point uh, depression constant. And you can Google that. You can find all sorts of freezing point depression constant tables. Um, little m, this is the only time that we're going to use this concentration. Remember, concentration is just the amount of the solute per the solvent. Um, and so this little m is molality. Kind of a strange word, not molarity. We use molarity all the time, molality. And as a reminder, the unit for this is moles of the solute. And here's the strange part, divided by kilogram of solvent. Of all of the concentrations that you've learned in a uh, first year chemistry class, this is the only one that divides by solvent. All of our other concentrations are the total solution of solute and solvent. So this one's weird, that one's weird. Oh, I also wanted to add um, your delta T will be in degree C for the unit, and this Kf is degree C per molo, degree C per molo. So I like to do two problems for you. One's really straightforward, and the other one is maybe a little bit, is going to be the bonus one at the end of the, uh, the chapter that gets a little star by it. It'll be a little bit harder. Um, okay, so here is our first question. We have a 0.625 mole calcium nitrate. I wanna pause there. There may be some questions that they'll give you the moles of the um, solute, or they'll give you the grams. 
and then they'll give you the mass of the solvent. They expect you to find molality. So if you need to watch that um, video on how to find molality, it's just mole solute divided by kilograms of solvent. I know in problems that there's a chance you might have to do that. If they give you grams, be sure to use molar mass, convert from grams to moles, and then just do mole of solute divided by kilogram of solvent. Okay, so we have this 0.625 molal solution, and we want to know what's the new freezing point. Now this, I should have put this here, it's going to be aqueous, okay? We've dissolved that in water. And so I put a note, I looked this up. The freezing point depression constant is 1.86 degrees C per molal for water. And we all know the pure, the pure freezing point for water is zero degrees C. So we want to know if we put in this concentration into the water, how much are we going to depress that freezing point? Okay, so let's go ahead and look at our formula. We'll have delta T sub F equals I Kf times m. Well, nice. I've got my m. There is the molality. I've got my Kf. There it is. I need I. We've got a calcium nitrate. Let's go ahead and dissociate this. So we dissociate into the cation and the anion, and we make sure that we get the right amounts. So the cation is our calcium ion, CA2 plus. And I look, how many calciums are there? Well, that's understood to be a one. We've got one calcium. And then my nitrates, that's the anion. Um, so there's my anion, how many do I have of those? Well, it's in parentheses with that subscript, two. So we've got two of those. And then you just go and count the ions. One, two, three particles. So I is going to be three. We've got three particles. Now we can plug and chug. So change, change of freezing point is three particles times 1.86 degrees C divided by molal times the molality 0.625 molal. Look at the units. When we multiply, molal cancels and we'll be left with degree C. So when we multiply this through, we get um, a change in temperature of 3.49. And my unit is degree C. Now remember, that's not my answer. That's the change in temperature. We want to know the new final temperature. So you start from the pure temperature, okay, zero degrees, minus the change in temperature, 3.49, and our new freezing point, so I'll put new freezing point, is going to be negative, negative 3.49 degrees C. So you subtract it from the pure freezing point. I wanna make sure you can see that, yeah, you can see that. Okay, nice. So there's the first question, and that's going to be a pretty straightforward question. Let's go ahead and do a little bit harder problem. We are going to take ethanol and dissolve um, some sucrose in it, okay? Kind of weird, why would we ever dissolve sucrose in ethanol? Only because we're using an example, <laughs> that's it. Um, okay, so notice how this is worded. Um, it says, we want to know the ethanol freezing point depression. Oh, no, no, so sorry. It's telling us that the ethanol freezing point depression is 2.2 .2 degrees C. So that right there, they're actually giving us the change in temperature. Okay, so be really careful as you read this. That is telling us, hey, the change in the freezing point, the freezing point depression is 2.2. .2. Um, they're not telling us the actual new freezing point. That's the change in temperature. Um, so the ethanol freezing point depression is 2.2 .2 degrees C by adding how much sucrose to one kilogram of ethanol. Um, so if we change the temperature 2.2 .2 degrees and we have one kilogram of ethanol, well, how much sucrose do we have to add to that? How much sucrose? Notice the word amount, amount of sucrose. So if I look at my formula, we've got, I'll start labeling. We've got the change in temperature is the 2.2 .2 degrees C. Sucrose is a non-electrolyte, and non-electrolytes, what's the particle? How many particles is it? Big fat one, it's just one. Um, we've got the freezing point depression for ethanol is 1.99 degrees C. So what I don't have is M, molality. Now let's look at molality one more time, right there. Molality is moles of solute, and that's what we wanna know amount of sucrose. 
um, and kilograms of solvent. Well, they gave us the kilograms of solvent. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to solve for M, get the molality, and then I'll use the molality to find the amount of the solute. Okay, um, so M will be my unknown. Let's go ahead and write down the formula. Change in temperature equals I Kf M. I'm going to go ahead and um, solve for the molality. Oh, I don't think I mentioned this. Just a little side note, I is unit less. No unit for I, just number of particles. Um, so we are going to get molality equals change of temperature, 2.2 degrees C, divided by the number of particles. Sucrose is a non-electrolyte, so that's one, times the freezing point depression, 1.99 degrees C, divided by M. Ooh, look at our units. The degree C cancels. Remember when you have a fraction divided by a fraction, reciprocate, multiply. So degree C cancels, and we're going to end up with molality in the numerator. Um, so 2.2 divided by 1 times 1.99 is going to give us 1.11 molal. Now, whenever I have, um, whenever I have concentrations and I have to do work with them, I always break them into the numerator and denominator. So how I could write this is that we have 1.11 moles of sucrose for every one kilogram of ethanol. That's what's embedded inside that little m. Moles of the solute for this particular solution divided by one kilogram, because that's understood to be divided by one, divided by one kilogram of ethanol. So in this problem, they said how, <coughs> how much sucrose um, is required if we've got, <coughs> excuse me, or if we've got one kilogram of ethanol in order to decrease the freezing point by 2.2 degrees C. So I had a one kilogram of ethanol. All I have to do now is multiply by that one kilogram of ethanol that they gave us at the beginning of the problem. And that tells us we need 1.11 moles of sucrose. And there's your answer. Now, if they wanted grams, you just use molar mass. Um, you would find the uh, chemical formula for sucrose, do the molar mass, and go from one mole to the grams of the sucrose. Multiply that and that would give you the grams. Okay, very good. So, two examples and some explanation on freezing point depression. Uh, whenever you add a solute to a solvent, that temperature is going to be lower than the freezing point of the pure solvent. Okay. Have a great day. If you need help with uh, boiling point elevation, watch that video. Thanks so much. Bye.